I can show you the way that the color checker works before we do the photo shoot. So we shot two sets during the live shoot, set one and set two. Now normally you have to make sure that the color checker is in the image like this, preferably even a little bit flatter than this. You can fill the frame with it, in the past you really had to, but nowadays this will work just fine. Now every time you change your lighting setup, especially when you change modifiers or strobes or situations like inside or outside, <clears throat> always make sure you shoot a new color checker. And creating the profile is super, super simple. Now of course you can do it easy. If you don't want to do anything with profiles, just go to develop, get your white balance picker and just click here. Colors will be okay. Get your white balance picker. Let's go for Adobe Color. Let's grab your white balance picker and let's do this. So this is the first thing you can do, but it's 100% for white balance, but it's not really the right colors. When you zoom in here, you can still see that it uses the Adobe Colors and we don't want that. So let's create that profile. Now, as soon as you install the software, there's also a Lightroom plugin you can install. And you can find it here, File, Export, and then go for the color checker camera calibration. Just give it a name. In this case, we are using a Hensel strobe with a Rogue umbrella and press export. Okay, so it created the profile. The only thing you now have to do is quit a Lightroom. So press OK, quit a Lightroom and restart Lightroom. Okay, we're back in Lightroom and now you might think that the profile is already activated, but it's not. Go here for those squares, press and now go for profiles. And as you can see here, now we have to Hensel. Now look at the difference. If we go to Adobe Raw and we go through all these settings, let's zoom in on the color checker. <clears throat> we go through all these settings, you will see that they change. Of course, black and white, Adobe Standard, Adobe Portrait. And now look at the blue squares. You see that with the Adobe calibration, it hardly changes. You see a little bit in brightness, you see a little bit in the black levels, but overall the colors, they change a little bit, but not a lot. Let's go for that Hansel one. Look at this. Now this is a huge difference. Let's activate this one and let's go for the other ones again. As you can see, small differences, but as soon as I let go, this is the real one. Okay, let's zoom out again, press close. Now in this case, what I always do even after calibration is still use that color checker to get the proper white balance. And as you can see, it did change just a little bit. Okay, but if you did this once, do you need to do it again? Well, we are using Hensel strobes and those strobes are very, very stable in the color temperature. But you're using different modifiers, you're using different backdrops. Maybe you use something that's a little bit reddish or a little bit green. That can all infect your image. So it's very important that whenever you change something, you do a new color checker. And of course we did two. So let's try it again. And let's see if there's a difference between the two. I'm first going to do white balance, file, export, color checker, and then just name it Hensel with a strip light and grid and export. There we go. Same story, Lightroom quit. And start up again. Okay, there we go. Go for the second one. Go here. And of course, now we select the strip light with grid. Now let's zoom in on the color checker. And let's just switch between the two. Let me first, of course, do the proper white balance. One moment. So both should be 100% the same, right? And we are pretty close, I think. Let's look at the difference. There we go. There's a slight difference in the reds and magentas. But overall, we are pretty stable. And this is, of course, also because I'm using a light meter. So my luminance channel is always correct. Again, change it for the Adobe's and you see a huge difference. Let's zoom out for skin tones. When I look at this, it looks okay, but it doesn't look 100% natural. When I go for these, 
There we go, this looks way better. But as you can see, look at the skin tones. There is a difference between those two modifiers. So make sure that whenever you change something, you always use the proper calibration file. So in this case, this is the strip light. So we change the strip light and this one, that's the one with the umbrella. And now when I put them next to each other, they will look approximately the same, depending of course on the lighting and the backdrop. But at least the color checkers should be the same. So every time you change your lighting setup, also when you lower or uh, raise the outputs of the strobe, I highly recommend as soon as you're done and you're ready to shoot, shoot the color checker and then you always know that you have the proper color balance and of course the proper colors. Again, this part is the color balance, a white balance. And this is the part where the calibration takes place.